Hello America, this is Call of Duty Goddess. Today is June the 18th, 2016. I have Michelle Bachman here. I remember when she was in Congress, she introduced the first Muslim Brotherhood bill to rid the Muslim Brotherhood from the halls of our Congress and from the halls of our government, including all the agencies. It didn't, nothing happened with it. Anyway, I want to let you hear what she describes as the takeover of our country. Thank you. My name is Michelle Bachman. I want to thank you for allowing me to be a part of this press conference. And I played a role in this story, and I was thrilled to be able to write the foreword for Phil and Art's book. This is a very important book. And it is a heartbreaking day that we are here today because I believe in part we, uh, what Phil has told all of you is that he was on track to put very important information in front of law enforcement's face. Information that would allow them to crack the code, if you will, to understand and to be able to defeat networks here in the United States that wanted to bring about violent acts against Mer American citizens or against American targets. And I think, again, it's important to underscore what was the ultimate goal and what is the ultimate goal around the world globally, not just here in the United States. The ultimate goal is the establishment of Islamic Sharia law around the world. That includes the United States. It is hard for us to understand or believe, growing up in the United States, that someone would seek to overthrow the United States Constitution and in its place put a series of laws known as Islamic law, Sharia law, in its place and force, even through violence, all people to have to follow someone's interpretation of Islamic law. But that's exactly what the goal is. The fellow that committed the horrific acts on Sunday morning had that as his goal. The individuals who shot the 14 innocent people in San Bernardino had that as their goal. People across the globe who are acting in the name of Allah are, do, are trying to bring about the same goal the establishment of Sharia law across the globe. Philip had mentioned a document uh, known as the, um, uh, why can't I say it? Touchstone. Yeah, the Touchstone document, which talks about civilization jihad um, here in the United States. There are various means that, uh, that those that are trying to establish a, a global caliphate or Islamic Sharia law across the globe are trying to use. In some cases, it's through immigration. In some cases, it's through violence. In some cases, it's through taking over institutions. Uh, I was working as a member of the United States Congress. My function is to provide oversight over various committees. I sat on Financial Services Committee, and then I was fortunate enough to be appointed to the Intelligence Committee. The Intelligence Committee is one of the smallest committees in Congress by design. We deal with the classified secrets of our nation. Almost all of our work is done behind closed doors for obvious reasons. It is not televised. Uh, during the course of that work, I, I saw how crucial this work was. And I also saw that at about the same time that I was coming on this committee, there was a rapid increase in the amount of terrorism across the globe, but also threats here in the United States. And I, needed, I felt I needed to learn more than what was just coming and being presented to me by the committee. Because I had a sense, maybe I'm wrong, I had a sense that the departments that were coming to present information to us before the committee were perhaps in some sense sanitizing some of the information and perhaps we weren't getting the whole story as members of Congress. Because one thing I have learned being in government is that bureaucracies and individuals in government want to make themselves look good, especially before those who who are tasked with holding them accountable. So I had asked one of my aides to find me important people or people who are in the know who could bring me information. Hence walks in Philip Haney. 
one of my aides brought Philip Haney to me and said, Philip has a very important story to tell you. And really, I think the, the, uh, the, the uh, cover for this book says it all, which is, see something, say nothing. Because what Phil Haney did, and what I tried to do in my, I'm a cog in the wheel, Phil, Phil is a cog in the wheel, we both believe very strongly in the United States Constitution. He took his oath of office extremely seriously, and he did right by his oath of office. He did right by the Constitution. He did what we want 100,000 federal employees to do, to act in accordance with his job description and keep the American people safe. He did it. He fulfilled his job. I tried to do the same as a member of Congress. I was very serious when I took my oath of office. I believe in our country, in our Constitution, and I tried to fulfill that, that uh, level of oversight. So when he saw something, he tried to say something. When I saw something, I tried to say something. When Phil tried to say something, he was punished for it. He was punished with investigations being opened up on him, not on um, connecting the dots against terrorists and terrorist activities, but against Phil Haney, the person who unbelievably, with the gift that God has given him, where he put the trails together to get to the nest, the investigations were opened up on him. I want to give you a couple examples of my own life working with Phil Haney. Phil brought up the fact that I had authored uh, letters to various uh, inspectors general in our uh, government, Department of Defense, uh, Homeland Security, various departments. That is true. The reason why is because evidence was brought to me specifically about the influence of the Muslim Brotherhood in the United States government. The Muslim Brotherhood has been designated a foreign terrorist organization by the United Kingdom, by the United Arab Emirate, by other nations across the world. It, all you have to do is, is look at the Muslim Brotherhood, their history, what they stand for, and very, it's clear to see they are a foreign terrorist organization. In fact, I authored legislation here in the United States to designate the Muslim Brotherhood a foreign terrorist organization. And so I authored the letters. I found four other members of Congress, including Representative Louis Gohmert, who signed on to my legislation or on to my letters to the inspectors general. And we asked questions very specifically about um, individuals and about people who were being involved in our government who had more than questionable ties with the Muslim Brotherhood. One individual that I asked questions about is affiliated with then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, now the presumptive nominee for the Democrat Party. One of her chief aides was a woman named Huma Abedin. The, these, were, this, these were the facts that were brought to me. What I was told is that uh, her mother and her father were both members of the Muslim Brotherhood. Her father was a senior member of the Muslim Brotherhood, her mom, mother being a member of the Muslim Sisterhood, her brother being a uh, close personal friend with Karadawi, who is the spiritual leader for the Muslim Brotherhood. Also, her parents were involved in a magazine, essentially what I was told was a propaganda organ that was seeking to establish and promote the establishment of Islamic Sharia law across the globe. This magazine, I was told by the facts brought to me, in part was funded by a man named Omar Nassif, who was also a financer for Osama bin Laden. He had financed terrorism. He was financing this Sharia publication. This was Huma Abedin's parents who were writing this magazine. During the time that Huma Abedin, I was told, was working for Mrs. Clinton while she was uh, the first lady, also while she was United States Senator, Huma Abedin's name was listed on the masthead as an associate editor of that magazine. Now, according to US federal law, if a person has that kind of associations, they don't get a security clearance for obvious reasons. And so we as members of Congress did our duty, our oversight function. 
We ask questions of the Inspector General. Would you look into and find out how did Huma Abedin get her security clearance? Was she granted a waiver? How did it happen? Because according to federal law, that shouldn't have happened. We never even got the courtesy of a response from the Inspector Generals uh, to our letters. Philip Haney wrote about that in his book. That isn't the only example. Uh, Philip Haney also wrote about the Tarnoff brothers in his book. As you know, that was another tragedy that occurred in Boston. And they attended an Islamic mosque in the Boston area. I served on the Intelligence Committee at that time as well. When that happened, I took a trip to Moscow. And I went to Moscow for the purpose of meeting with uh, colleagues there, our own individuals who were there. But I also wanted to find out more information because there was a link with the Tsarnoff brothers and also with uh, that part of the world. During the, during the course of that meeting, I had understood that a cable had been sent from Russia to the United States Tel Intelligence Service warning us of the Tsarnoff brothers and that we should look into them. When I was there, I asked them to read the cable to me. They put it in my hands, but I don't read Russian Cyrillic. So they read it to me. It was brought back to the United States at my request in a diplomatic pouch. It was translated into English. It was read again here. And I, I questioned the FBI, did you question the Tsarnoff brothers? Did you question people about these individuals? Or did you question these individuals and people who knew them? Uh, because as you know, the FBI closed that investigation in a very similar fashion to the way that they closed the, in the investigation into the Orlando killer. And I wanted to know why did you close that investigation? I asked them, did you survey the mosque that the Tsarnoff brothers attended? No, they did not surveil that mosque. I asked if they uh, talked with the imam, the people at the mosque. No, they did not. They told me that they do not do that. The reason why I bring that up is because it was very clear that a very different view of national security is being adopted now in our country. And it is a view that is getting innocent American people killed. And it has to stop. We have to change course, and we have to open our eyes, and we have to believe in the reality that's in front of us. And we have to understand that the ideology, the ideas of Islamic supremacy are the motivation behind these killers because their ultimate goal is to achieve Sharia law as the law of the land. And they are willing to kill innocent people because they believe that Sharia law allows them to do that to achieve their goal. I saw this myself as a member of Congress, that we were engaging in this foolish policy. We took Philip Haney. I believed him. He showed me PowerPoint presentations of the information that he had put together. I knew he was not a kook. I knew he was the real deal. I knew he was being shunned. I knew he wasn't being listened to. I had survived a national smear campaign of my own name when I went forward with these letters um, asking questions about the Muslim Brotherhood and their influence in our government. I, I was smeared for that. So I identified with and understood what Phil was going through. And so I tried to um, give credibility to Phil with my colleagues. I took him to committee chairs, to subcommittee chairs, so that he could share his story, so he could share his information, so they would know that he was being told to delete information that could get, put America in a situation where innocent people could get killed. I am sorry to say, not much was done with the information that Phil gave to them. This is a shame on our government. And we are standing today in a situation where we just saw this happen on Sunday in Orlando. On Monday, we saw what happened in Paris. 
Uh, we had heard from a reporter just a little bit earlier uh, that there's a, a alleged Twitter feed that perhaps there's a shooter holding hostages right now in Amarillo, Texas. We don't know if that's true. It hasn't been confirmed. But this may continue. And I believe it will continue until we wake up and push back. This is a deadly policy that, the, that our current administration is engaging in, which is see something, say nothing. That is the administration's policy. Because if it has to do with Islamic ideology, boy, turn away. And the best example was this. I woke up on Sunday morning and saw what all of you saw on television with this story. And local law enforcement, the local mayor, and the FBI were all at the microphone talking about this tragedy. But who did the FBI introduce? They introduced the imam of the Central Florida um, Islamic Center. Now I ask you. The administration wants to have it two ways. On one hand, they want to say that terrorism has nothing to do with Islam. If it has nothing to do with Islam, why do you have an imam up there that the FBI is introducing? And when the imam went to the microphone, his whole point of view was to say, let's not get too crazy here and jump to any conclusions. Let's just be calm. Well, there's no hordes running in the streets trying to hang Muslims right now. The American people are very constrained, I think, and very civilized in all of this. The American people want to live happy lives. They want to live quiet, peaceable lives. And so they aren't out doing mean things to Muslims, nor should they be. But the fact is, we have the wrong view of national security, a fatally flawed view of national security. Philip Haney knows that. He saw it. He did everything he could short of, the, and it almost cost him his career by telling the truth. I did the same thing. I saw it. I went out on a limb, practically lost my seat in Congress over it. It didn't matter to me because what mattered to me was protecting the American people and maintaining our national security. That's what's at stake right now. Are we going to wake up now when we've had the worst jihadist attack since 911, or are we going to believe the fantasy fiction of fantasy Islam that has been put out as official policy by this administration? I hope not. As a country, we have, or as an administration, they have willfully blinded themselves from information. They have engaged in willful ignorance by ignoring the information that people like Philip Haney gave to them. And they've ga they, with all due respect, they have engaged in willful stupidity by created a creating a delusional fantasy view of Islam that doesn't exist. The real view of Islam, reading the Quran and the Hadith, calls for a global caliphate and the global domination of Sharia law and the use of violence to achieve that means. Let's wake up. Let's listen to the Phil Haney's of the world. Let's listen to the congressmen who see this and try to provide oversight rather than smearing them. Let's wake up and protect the innocent. That's what we're to do and follow our Constitution. Thank you.